Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a brand new unboxing video and what may be my most exciting unboxing video to date. What you're looking at right now is what is left of my knife collection. If you've been following my channel you know that I have uh, gotten a few new knives over the last few months and I've been customizing some things and building up my collection. I had about eight or nine knives. But recently I came across an offer for a very special custom knife that you already know what it is from the title but uh, I'm gonna save it just to, until I can open it up here but I wanted to just show you what I've got left. I actually needed to sell a bunch of my knives in order to afford to buy this one and you'll understand why in a minute. Uh, so what I have left right now is a couple of 0392's and the Peter Resenti Nirvana. Now these knives are sort of my standard by which I measure all other knives. These 0392's are in my opinion some of the very very best production folding knives that are available right now. I think that there are still a few of these BLKs left out there. Definitely go and check it out. I love the copper that I've got on here. You can see the patina that's going on on all of that hardware. Uh, definitely worthy of a final diagnosis coming up in a little while and then I'll get it shipped off to Razor Edge Knives for some customization. The 0392 BRN GLD, you know, one of my absolute favorite knives of all time. This one is basically unsellable to me. This is really the one that started it all and I absolutely love this knife. And the Peter Resenti Nirvana is utter perfection. There is just, I, I can't even conceive of a better folding knife that has really ever been made. Uh, this is an integral single handle, single piece of titanium on the handle and uh, the action is out of control and crazy smooth and the quality is just there. So uh, since I have been advancing my collection, uh, I've kind of gone through some higher end production knives and into some custom knives. Uh, I've had some good, some good knives and bad knives and uh, but finally I've reached the point where I've gotten into what I would call crazy territory. This is the area of the knife market that is just bonkers. Uh, we're paying way too much to pick these things up and a lot of the channels out there that you might see, some of these guys, Jim Skelton, Civi, uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny, some of these guys um, have these crazy expensive blades and so it's sort of every day for them, but this is really the first time that I'm getting into like super crazy money. Maybe you could argue that the Peter Resenti was too much money, uh, but this one truly I needed to sell off some knives to pick up. So uh, without much further ado, I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up. And what I have purchased is a very rare collaboration here. This is the Frank Fisher and Robert Carter talon. This is a knife uh, conceived by the two makers. They had been planning to make a knife together for about a year or so, maybe a couple of years, but they had never really gotten it together. And then about a year ago they finally started kicking some uh, designs back and forth. Uh, they actually went through I think two iterations of a knife before they landed on the final design. And then uh, they went forward with the execution. And it's very interesting. I've spoken to Robert and I've spoken to Frank about the knives. And there are only ever going to be nine of these knives. Only nine. Three knives are going to be made by the two guys together. Three knives are going to be made by Frank Fisher, of which this is one. And three knives are going to be made by Robert Carter. And so it's really interesting to me to have one of these very rare knives in my possession and be able to call it mine. I obtained this knife through Frank Fisher's Instagram. He posted this up one day and I had been lusting after this knife for about a year. And this is the main reason why. Look at that blade. Absolutely amazing. So again, I'd been lusting after this knife for a while, and when I saw him offering one for sale, I shot him a message and I said, how much? And he gave me a number that was absolutely out of this world, and I said, I apologize, sir, I cannot afford that right now. This is my upper limit. Uh, and after which he came down on the price a little bit, and uh, I thought about it for a couple of days, and then I said, I'll take it. 
Uh, I realized, however, it was going to require some fairly serious sacrifice. So in order to buy this knife, I have had to sell my Curtis F3, my 0392 Frunky, I sold the ZT0850, I sold the Spyderco Para 3, and the Maximet Native 5. So I got five knives sold, and I still had to pay a pretty significant premium over the money that I got from those knives in order to afford this. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying that we're getting into crazy, crazy, bonkers territory here. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the knife and sort of an overview here. We've got a three and a quarter inch blade of S90V steel done in this really, really cool sort of Warncliffe type blade. Uh, it's got the Frank Fisher-esque double recurve. It really harkens to the battles, uh, the, the very famous Frank Fisher battle knife design with that double recurve going on there. Some of Robert Carter's knives have this kind of Warncliffe profile. We've got the very, very awesome Fisher Mokutai pivot hardware going on with the multi-layer anodization. Really, really fantastic. Very, very high quality. Very, very tiny and perfect details going on in there. There's a little bit of dust. It's like a watch, that little pivot is so perfect. Just the very fine detail going on there. And then we've got this amazing ergonomic handle with this cool shape. These speed holes that have been chamfered so you can see that shining titanium reflecting off there. And then all the edges have been hand rubbed with a nice satin finish. The backspacer, which is floating in reality, but there are these liners that are actually in between, and those have actually been anodized. It's rather subtle. It might be a little bit hard to pick up on the camera, but those have actually been anodized, and they match the Mokutai coloration a little bit with the blues and the purples and the yellows and the golds that you can see in there, multicolored. And then it's got a very, very subtle but very, very cool milled zirconium clip. So at 3.25 uh, uh, inches, and at only 4 ounces in weight, this is a very EDCable knife. And that's what I was really interested in. None of my knives are going to sit in a safe. Even this one that costs bonkers money is going to get carried. It's going to get used, and I'm going to cut with it. And people are going to see it, and uh, I'm going to scratch it. I'm going to dull the blade a little bit, uh, and it's going to happen. I have spoken to both of these guys and uh, they've made themselves available should the knife need any type of servicing so I know that I've got the backing of these very awesome custom makers. Um, so I am super super thrilled to have this knife in my collection uh, however small it might be at this point I will have to start rebuilding and I'll have to give that some time I'll need to recuperate some funds yet but this is an absolutely fantastic knife I have lusted after Frank Fisher designs ever since I started learning about knives. I will say that one of the very first things that I ever uh, saw, one of the very first YouTube videos that I ever saw was uh, Jim Skelton's video about his Frank Fisher battle. And that is what really got me interested in high-end custom knives. I never knew that such a spectacular thing could exist. And so I've been following Frank Fisher for a long time. I love Robert Carter and his work. He just seems like a really cool guy. Uh, I actually have one of his BBM models on pre-order right now with him and Nick Chuprin, so that should be a neat model. Um, just thrilled to finally have a Frank Fisher knife in my collection. And this one is a bit uh, unique to Frank. Uh, if you go and you look at pictures of this knife on Instagram uh, between the two pages, I want you to pay attention closely to the, uh, the grind. Frank Fisher's grind carries this awesome full satin hollow grind all the way up to the level uh, of this swedge, uh, whereas Robert Carter sits a little bit lower. So this one is actually unique in terms of the grind to Frank Fisher, and each one is slightly different from another one. So really, really thrilled to see this. So you're going to see a lot of pictures of this on my Instagram at Dr. Frunky. Thank you guys for stopping by and looking at my insanity. As always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.